proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the paratroopers of the United States Army. Okay, men, let's get ready. We're just a few minutes from the drop zone. You've had your orders. You know what to do. Remember this, you're paratroopers, so act like them, fight like them. Let's hit them and hit them hard. Here comes the Lieutenant Garrison. Okay, Sergeant Gasky. I'm going out first. I want the rest of you 17 guys to jump out in less than 17 seconds. You with me? Okay, yes, sir. let's go. All right. We're going to start the jump commands in a minute. Before we do, good luck, men. Happy landing. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Hey, ready? At this command, each paratrooper holds a snap fastener at the end of the heavy webbing which is attached to his parachute. Stand up. Hook up. Check equipment. Now, not for equipment check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each Point man eight. calls his number in the line as his turn comes. If the equipment is all right, if it isn't, someone will come to his assistance. Stand in the door. That's a green light. Go. Let's go. Geronimo. Geronimo. There they go, all 18 of them, making a jump behind the enemy lines as part of the parachute combat team in Operation Baden. In this play, we bring you the dramatic story of what happened on that jump and particularly of what happened to Private Johnny Owens, one of the 18 men in the plane. But before our first act curtain rises, this message. Young man, why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Right now, your United States Army, the senior service, needs qualified technicians in such varied and interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, photography, and many, many others. Yes, you can be trained to do a job and acquire a skill that will be of great benefit to you for the rest of your life. You can also take pride in the fact that you answered your country's call in time of great need. Why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the United States Army. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Operation Baden. Our story begins the day before the jump at a 7th Airborne Division air base in northern Italy. Johnny Owens and his buddy, Private Arkansas Clovey, are walking back to their quarters from the A Company mess hall. I tell you, Johnny, we're going to see some action soon. I feel it, my Arkansas bones. <laughs> What's so psychic about your Arkansas bones? Uh, they're just that much closer to the soil, that's what. Oh, I see. No, when I seen them feeding a steak and fried potatoes for supper tonight, I knew we was in for something. <laughs> some stuff, Arky. 
We've had steak before, nothing happened. What a guy. To hand you a good meal, instead of enjoying it, you start griping. They'd be better off feeding you fat back and turnip greens. Ooh, don't make me homesick. <laughs> now, how about chow call coming at 5 o'clock? It's an hour earlier than we generally have it. Don't they look funny to you? Maybe you got something there. I've been wondering about that myself. Well, here we are back at the tent. Maybe the other fellas heard something. Hi, Joey. Oh, uh, hi, Johnny. Well, what are you and that Arkansas chow hound doing back so early? They run out of chow? <laughs> no. We just started earlier, that's all. Arky here has a theory we're going into action because we had steak for supper. <laughs> well, Arky, don't you know there's a man's outfit? The Army's finest? Yeah, he's telling yeah, that's why we feed us steak, because it's a man's chow. No, I still feel something's in the air. No, look, maybe you Arkansas dirt farmers can feel rain in the air, but that doesn't give you a license to go feeling anything else. Hey, what do you think, Pop? Well, ooh, all I can say is that I hope they give me a chance to finish this letter to my kids before they start hmm. cutting any new orders. Say, hey, maybe we'll know soon. Here comes Sergeant Gasky. Are you all here? La Rosa? Yeah. Pop? Yeah. Joey? Yeah. Arky? Who? Owens? You? Okay. Here's some orders for you. <clears throat> Hot off the griddle. All right. Listen to this, fellas. All parachutists will be dropped in enemy territory tomorrow morning. Old pack will be worn. Taps will be at 2100 hours and Reveille at 0230. Mm. For security reasons, final orders will be issued during flight. Wow. Well, I reckon old Arky's bones knows what they're talking yeah, about, eh, boy? Nah, uh, nuts, Arky. All your bones are in your head. Hey, hey, Sarge, give us a lowdown. Where are we jumping? Yeah, What's our mission going to be? Yeah, how big is the jump going to oh, be? Oh, now, sir? look, take it easy, guys. You know I can't talk. The whole thing is top secret. Oh, wow. Come on. Oh, well, yeah. all right, all right. Look, but uh, keep it to yourselves. But uh, it's going to be a big operation. I think the whole division's going to be in a... Yeah? The whole division's going into action? Uh -huh. It must be something big. Well, we're going to be in a real scrap. What's our mission? Yeah, just where we're going in. Well, the old man don't take me in on his plans, fellas. But uh, security or no security, I, I don't know any more about it than you do. Uh, is the uh, lieutenant jumping with us? Sure thing. He'll tell us all about it on the plane tomorrow morning. So, you better hit the sack early. We've got a very busy day ahead of us. All right, all right Sergeant Gass. So long, sir. So long. Well, I guess we better get our gear laid out tonight. Every second will count in the morning. Yeah. Well, I'll just finish up my letter and then get to work. Well, Arky, how your bones feel now? Just think, you might be the hero of Ketchup Corners, Arkansas in the next few days. I'll take care of myself, Joey. Hey, Johnny, this is the first jump for you outside the States, isn't it? And you too, Arky. Yeah, it is, Pop. Our first jump outside of jump school. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot different from jump school, Johnny. There you had an instructor on the ground talking to you over a loudspeaker, directing you, helping you all the way down. You go out that door tomorrow, boys, you'll be on your own. How many combat jumps have you made, Joey? Well, I made two in Korea, Johnny, before I got transferred over here. Both rough ones, too. But, um, old Pop there, he knows what it is to be a paratrooper. In World War II, Pop fought at Bastogne with the 101st Airborne. He jumped with the 101st in Normandy and Holland. He was transferred to the 11th Airborne after the war and made the two jumps with that outfit when he was in Korea. Right, Pop? Key wrecked. That first combat jump's the toughest, though. Ah, but don't you worry. You'll do okay, Johnny. You too, Arky. Remember all that training in the jump school? Those mm. practice jumps from the 34-foot tower? Oh, how can I forget them over and over and over again? And those hours on the 250-foot tower, hanging from the harness, learning how to control your shoes. Yeah, we just couldn't wait to make our real jumps. Yeah, well, let me tell you. What you learned back there in jump school is what's going to pull you through tomorrow. No matter what spot you find yourself in, you'll do the right thing, even without thinking. That's what training does for you. Well... <clears throat> I'm all set now. I'll see you guys in the morning. Yeah, Joey. Right, so long now. So long. Say, uh, Arky. Yeah, Johnny? How do you feel? I felt better. 
Me too. This is what we wanted, Johnny. To make the grade and the best fighting outfit in the world. That's right. I remember when I was home on leave after basic training and I told the folks I wanted to transfer to the paratroopers. Yeah, what'd they say? Well, you know, Mom, she, she was worried at first, but I told her the better you'd trained, the better your chances of not getting hurt. Sure. Yeah, what'd the old man say? <laughs> Dad just listened and he said, uh, he said, uh, Mother, they'll, they'll teach him to take care of himself. <laughs> And uh, later on, when we were alone, Dad told me how he learned over in France in the first war that if you have to fight, you ought to fight with the best outfit there is, you know. Safer that way, because boys won't let you down. Sure. Hey, and, Johnny, remember when they pinned on our paratrooper wings after we finished our training? Yeah. Yeah, that was the proudest moment of my life. I'll never forget that last battalion parade. <laughs> Leading up to tomorrow. All the training, the check and double check. Constant doing and redoing until the hardest task became routine. Second nature. Yeah, all that was just leading up to tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow is when we make that training pay off. Mm. Here's Taps, sir. Mm. Guess we better get some rest. Yeah. Good night, Augie. Good night, John. Proudly we hail production Operation Baden will return in just a moment for the second act. But first, it shall not happen here. That is the unspoken prayer of every man in the United States Army. That is the unspoken reason for our growing military might. But the time has come to speak. The time has come to tell of that small phrase, those five words, it shall not happen here. Let us speak only to those young men of America who have not taken pause to think. Let's shout it in a voice that will reach into every city and village across the length and breadth of this great land. Young, Young man, man, you, you are, are needed. needed. You, you are, are needed, needed to help, to help preserve, preserve the peace. peace. You, are you are needed, needed to serve, serve in your United, United States, States Army, Army to ensure for your loved ones, ones that it shall not happen here. here. You are urged to visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today and enlist in the United States Army. The need is urgent. Do it today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Operation Baden. <laughs> It's morning, early morning. The darkness cloaks the before dawn chill. Little films of mist dance through tent flaps as sleeping men dream of the big adventure ahead. Certainly not for long, because that man, the one stepping into the tent there, that's Sergeant Gasky. Okay, fellas, let's go. Get some breakfast and assemble at the plane in 25 minutes. <laughs> Men are aboard, Lieutenant. Okay, Sergeant. Let's go. Hey, 
There's the lieutenant up front with an armful of maps, Arky. Looks like he's going to brief us now. Oh, yeah. Uh, can I have your attention, please? Have you been listening or just asleep? Oh, uh, we're hey, up. Don't worry. Wake up, Bill. Now, uh, this is the start of Operation Baden. Operation Baden. B-A-D-E-N. Baden is a lake in central Austria. Pass out the map, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Now, Brennersbrook is the only good-sized port on the eastern half of the lake. From there, the enemy could move large forces westward by boat. They could land them to the rear of our troops, cutting our supply and communications lines. They might even be able to trap large elements of our 8th Corps and endanger our whole position. At this point, commander of the 8th Corps called for airborne support. Well, well, we won't support need it. Us, they our us. entire regiment... <laughs> He's making the drop today. Wow. His mission is to destroy enemy troops, fortifications, and big guns in and around the town of Brennersbrook, and to destroy all port facilities. What do we do then, Lieutenant? We're launching a counteroffensive together with Italian and British allies. The Italian troops are attacking from the south. I believe they consist of the Italian Ariete Armored Brigade and the uh, Napoli Infantry Division. Two British armored brigades are attacking from the north. What if the, uh, the counterattack fails? Well, then it'll be up to the Air Force to fly us out. And what is our mission? We have what I think is the most difficult and dangerous mission of the entire combat team. Our job is to destroy the port facilities. That means our drop zone is closest to the lake. Lieutenant, have I got time to take some swimming lessons? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but Joey, that's the oh. danger. If the plane is slightly off course, or if the wind blows the wrong way, we may land in the lake. As soon as you make your jump and your eyes adjust, I want you men to get your bearings and be in position to keep away from the lake. How high will we be jumping from, Lieutenant? The jump will be from uh, 800 feet. Now, I'm going forward to check the course with the pilot. Sergeant Gasky has detailed maps of our drop zone. He'll go over individual assignments with you. Are there any questions? Okay, take over, Sergeant. Yes. All right, now, here are your maps. This is a detailed map of the town. Our drop area is a public park that runs parallel to the docks. It's about, it's about 100 yards back. marked in green on those maps. You got it? Yeah, yeah here, here it is. As soon as we land, we assemble at the big statue of the soldier on horseback in the center of the park. Hey, Pop, careful you don't land on a sword. Uh, okay, come on. All right, come on, now knock it off, huh? Now, our targets are marked on the map in red. They're numbered. At the assembly area, we'll break up into two sections of nine men each. Lieutenant will take one, I'll take the other. Now, he'll start at the north, I'll start at the south. We'll both work toward the center. Any questions? Yeah, what's the password? There are two passwords, a sign and a countersign. The sign is Mason, the countersign is Dixon. Mason Dixon. Mason Dixon. All right, now remember, there'll be no firing when you land. We don't want to give ourselves away before we get organized, so no shoot. Understand? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Now, each man has 25 pounds of demolition, except for the two fuse men. Owens. Yes, Sergeant. I want you to carry all the fuses for my section. Pop. Yes, Sergeant. You carry the fuses for Lieutenant Garrison's section. OK. And that does it. There's nothing to do now but wait till the lieutenant comes back. Okay, men, let's get ready. We're just a few minutes from the drop zone. You've had your orders. You know what to do. Remember this, you're paratroopers, so act like them, fight like them. Let's hit them and hit them hard. Here comes to Lieutenant Garrison. Okay, Sergeant. Yes, Sergeant. Uh, 
Okay, Sergeant Caskey. I'm going out first. I want the rest of you 17 guys out in less than 17 seconds. You with me? Don't you worry, sir. We're going to start the jump commands in a minute. Before we do, good luck. Happy landing. Yeah. Good luck. Get ready. Stand up. Look up. Check equipment. Down up for equipment check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And in the door. As the green light. Go! Let's go! Geronimo! 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 opening. Oh, look at that chute billowing out. Sweetest thing I ever saw. Well, so far so good. Now I'll look out for the rest of the guys. Where are they? Am I all alone up here? There they are. Holy cow. Look at how far away they are. I'm drifting. I'm drifting away from them. Fast. Faster. She must be. She's been caught in an air cart. Hey. Remember what the lieutenant said about how close we were to the lake? Let's see. If that wind is blowing west. It might be carrying me over the water. I gotta work my chute back the other way. Come on. That's no use. That wind is too strong. Where are they now? I can't even see them anymore. Hey, I better start checking the landing area. The lake. There she is. The lake. I'm right over the water. I can't see anything but water. I guess I... I guess I must be in the middle of a lake. I better get ready. Oh, boy. It's so lonely out here. Nothing but night and the black water and, and me. I wonder what happened to the fellas. Arky. Sergeant Gasky. <laughs> I guess old Arky will miss me anyway. Hey, I forgot. I got the fuses. Even if they... They land okay. They they won't be able to score, and we'll lose. We'll lose. There's the water. There it is. There it is. Oh! I saw him hit the water here, Major. Hey, look, look over there to the right, about 20 yards away. It's a piece of a chute still afloat. All right, I'll jump in after him, Major. Uh, wait, wait, Daniels. Put on this life preserver with a line attached. Then we can pull you both into the boat. Okay, sir. Cut the motor. He might be under the boat. I got it. All right, pull him in. There's Daniels. Hold on to the chute, Daniels. We'll give you a hand. Yeah, okay, sir. All together now, heave. Yeah, there's the paratrooper now. Get him in fast. Uh, that boy swallowed a lot of water. Captain, let's see if you can get some of it out of him. Maybe a little artificial respiration. Hey, 
Major, look. He's coming, too. <laughs> Seems like those paratroopers are just as tough as they think they are. Captain, have the skipper put her around and make report. Yes, sir. Uh, what outfit are you with, son? Chow and private. Serial number 33749152. Good boy. I'm Major Llewellyn. I'm one of the umpires of this exercise, Operation Bud. I have to judge whether the blue or the red team won this particular phase. As far as you're concerned, Owens, you're out of it. You're a casualty. Well, thank you for saving my life, Major. Glad we saw you. That's what we're out here for. I'm with Company A of the 77th Battalion. Do you know how the boys made out? Isn't that the company that attacked the dock installations? Yes, sir. Oh, they did fine. We consider the docks about 80% demolished. I'd say their attack was a complete success. But the fuses, where did they get those, uh... Beg your pardon? I mean, uh, the casualties. Any men hurt on the jump? Nothing serious. Oh, that's great, sir. Yeah. Well, here we are at the dock. Uh, think you can make it on your own? Yes, I'm okay now. Thanks, sir. Hey, that looks like the gang from Makeup. Hey, hey, Arky! Hey, 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 Arky! Hey, 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 you okay? Are you okay? Good sure thing. How about you, kid? Oh, we all landed fine. Good. I sure was worried about you, though. <laughs> Looked all over for you. Hi, Sergeant Gasky. Hi, Sarge. Well, well, if it ain't Esther Williams. <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, say, Sarge, I heard the Major say our attack was a success, sir. What about the fuses? The fuses? Yeah. Well, when we couldn't find you, we took half of Pops. Sergeant Gasky always plays it safe, boy. That's why he's a sergeant. <laughs> Plan ahead to get ahead. There's sound advice for you young men of America. And here's how you can act on that advice. Your United States Army is offering a bright future in such interesting technical fields as radio, radar, electronics, mechanics, meteorology, photography, and many, many others. Perhaps you're not qualified in any of these urgently needed skills. Well, here's the answer to that. The United States Army, through its many fine technical schools, is prepared to train you in the field for which you show an aptitude. Now, there's a great opportunity, your opportunity to plan ahead, to get ahead. For full details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Bureau for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>